Good morning and welcome back. It is now June 17th and a cool and cloudy morning today. We did get about a half inch of moisture over the weekend, so we have some pretty good moisture conditions at the moment with forecast for more this afternoon and tomorrow morning. So we'll see whether that happens or not, but let's see what's going on in the field. A lot of the barley fields like this one, they've all been sprayed now, so I'm basically just assessing for herbicide effectiveness, making sure we don't need to do any sort of emergency resprays. You can see this one, we are pretty much at roll cover. We are well into stem extension and everything is looking good. There is a little bit of disease here and there. You can see we've got a little bit of blotch starting to develop in this one, given the moisture conditions. It's not all of that surprising. We'll keep an eye on this and if we need to, we'll hit it with uh, fungicide at flag leaf timing. There is still a few younger fields out there, like this barley field, which is just barely starting to push the third leaf, so we're probably going to wait till next week to do herbicide timing in here yet. Main weed in here is just volunteer canola. This is on canola stubble, so you can see we've got a pretty good flush of canola coming up in here, but unlike a lot of other fields, this one does not seem to have a large amount of flea beetles taking control of them. Well, you can see here our first application of Liberty on this canola was... For the most part, pretty effective. This was well over a week, probably about 10 days ago, this was done. You can see we've got pretty good kill on a lot of the kochia that was up at the time. However, we do have new kochia that has come up or was just missed with the first application. So we are going to come in here, hit this again with another shot of Liberty. Probably throw some Centurion in because there's a few patches of wild oats in the field. Other than that, I found myself a bonus screwdriver already this morning. I love finding stuff in fields. This field of wheat, as you can see, has a volunteer alfalfa problem. This was an alfalfa grass field last year. We sprayed it out in the fall. But of course, alfalfa loves to come back from any rootstock that is remaining. So we did spray Supreme from Corteva in here about, well, last week. So you can just start to see some of the effects on the alfalfa right now. But uh, right now it is not fatal. But I bet you in another week or so we will see a lot more effects in here. Some of the group fours, like the lawn trail portion, can be quite slow acting and do take some time to show up. I think there's been another agronomist in one of my fields and they left behind a cheap promotional shovel. Tuesday morning now, about another half inch of rain and in some areas like this, just north of Fort McLeod, you can see we got a little trace of snow that's come down. Not nice for the middle of June, but I don't think it'll cause any damage. Well, I'm back to that same field that I was in last week that had been applied with Talonor, so it has now been two weeks after application, and you can see it's done a really good job at burning down some of this alfalfa. Yes, we are still alive down at the bottom, but uh, top growth control is pretty good, especially on some of these smaller plants. Canada thistle, still looking pretty sick. Those top growing points are basically burning off. You can see the leaf material is burning off. They are going to grow through it. They are going to come back from the base, but we will probably get some season long suppression on some of these guys. And you can see we still got some new ones down here emerging. You can see we also have some new kochia emergence since application. So not much we can do about that now, but the control is looking really good on the kochia that was here at the time. This field has some burdock in it, and I don't think it's it's going to be a lethal dose to the burdock, but the Talonor has certainly done some damage to it and is stunting it for sure. Well, the safflower has grown quite a bit since last week. We're really starting to pick up a bit of height on it here now. It is growing really fast. No sign of any buds or anything yet. We're still a little ways away from that. Leaves are starting to toughen up and stiffen up a little bit. You can see those serrated leaf margins with those thorns on them. However, the thorns are not too bad yet, but it'll get worse in the next few weeks. We do have some weeds and stuff in here, like there's some kochia and some lamb's quarters. You know, we got some grounds all down here, but there's not too much we can do about that. In-crop weed control options in safflower are very very thin we could spray out these volunteer cereals with something like centurion or clethodim here but uh, not too much for broadleaf weed control other than just ally which would have no effect on the kochia anyways canola canola fields are looking really great down in mcgrath area this week there's the odd hot spot here and there that is still suffering from flea beetles this field has a few around the edges but here out in the middle of the field things are looking really good and this canola is doing great we are now in the cabbaging stage here well, this wheat down here by McGrath is looking a little bit stressed this morning. It did have some snow and some frost on it yesterday, so you can see we do have some weather um, damage on some of these leaves. They look a little bit bedraggled. You can see they're a little burned by the weather here. So not much we can do about it. It'll snap out of it, but we are getting to that point where we're sure going to need some heat here. 
Well, my sorghum field still looks very unimpressive. There is some germination in here now. We do have a few patches where we do have some sorghum that has come up, but they're pretty few and far between at the moment. You can see they're a little bit stressed by the temperatures. We were not expecting it to be this cold in June, and sorghum is absolutely not frost tolerant. So probably a good thing there isn't more of it up and emerged. But hopefully now that we have some moisture, we will see some more emergence, because if we can get a decent stand in this field, it'll be a pretty impressive crop. This canola field, like many others, is trying to bolt and flower. So we've got quite a few plants starting to bolt in here. A couple are just starting to put out their first flowers. It is pretty premature in here. This canola should have cabbaged out better than it has, but it has had a few problems in here. We've had to spray twice for flea beetles. So you can see, you know, some of these older leaves and stuff down here have quite a bit of flea beetle damage on them. You can, there's even still the odd flea beetle here and there, although I think we've got them under control adequately now. But what we really need is, uh, now that we've got some moisture, we need some heat to drive some better growing conditions and get these fields on a little bit better of a footing. Thursday morning now, some beautiful weather out here. I think it's going to be a really nice day, high of 22 and sun today. So we should really see some good growing conditions the next couple days with the sun coming out. These peas are looking really good here. And we are, we still have a little ways to go before flower. This one here that I pulled apart we are four closed nodes away from flowers yet so still have a little ways to go as far as that goes these peas though are looking pretty good they got lots of good tendril growth they're starting to twine themselves together and pick up a little bit of height so things here are looking good right now just getting some more plots sprayed today this is going on irrigated barley this barley's looking pretty good we're just at herbicide timing here so i just went in and did only the herbicide timing products so there is no pre-burn products or anything like that in here so the humaterra for example is out uh, i did include the phycoterra which is in the second plot here technically that is a pre-burn product but i've been so impressed with the results on it so far i've decided to put it in at herbicide timing see what happens i've also got proliant in here I've got Agrarius, I've got Nature's Aid Supercrop, ATP Relief, and the Nexus BioAg system in here. So I'm going to come back and do these again at flag leaf timing for, with the flag leaf products, you know, like ATP Fortify and, and more Nature's Aid Supercrop. So we'll see what happens. Now, I did not put a control plot in here, and I'm not replicating this one, so it's only just the six products in here. So... We're not taking this one to yield. This is just going to be a demonstrator, see if we can see any visual effects in the field. And I'm going to do it again on a young canola field as well. Well, another interesting thing about these plots on the barley, this barley we are going to spray with a growth regulator. It is going to get sprayed with a manipulator, which is a gibberellic acid regulator. And three of the products I have sprayed in here contain gibberellic acid. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. Hopefully we don't just confuse the hell out of the crop. Weed control on some of these kochia patches is still looking pretty good with the oxbow at the high rate. A lot of the kochia that was here is basically completely burned off. We're seeing a little bit of regrowth on some, but there is some pretty severe stunting. We also have kind of a flush of new lambs quarters kind of coming up in here, but overall it shouldn't be too bad this is a you know really kind of saline low spots so the crop's not doing great in here for competition so we're probably still going to see a weedy patch here but most of the rest of the field which is not in such a low saline spot is looking much much better and has great crop competition so kosha is not going to be a problem out there uh, here is all six canola plots have been sprayed. There's no replication or anything here and no control plot. This is just for visual demonstration only. So control is the rest of the field. These will probably not go to harvest because I do not want to have to harvest about 60 square feet of canola with my hands. So we will see what happens in here. Same as the barley field, I did also include Phycoterra, even though it's not really an in-crop product, but I just like the results I'm seeing from it so far. And this is the first one here, where in this plot here at the end, I have thrown in absolutely every product at full rate. So this will answer the question of what if you listen to every salesman who pulls into your yard? So this has effectively gotten a 3x dose of PGPRs like gibberellic acid and fulvic and so on and so forth. So it'll be interesting to see, will it burn the canola or will we end up with canola 10 feet tall that never matures and stays green all year? So it'd be interesting to see if we get any difference in flowering or pod set on all of this. Can't wait to see what happens. 
Well, today I'm checking out a gravel pit, which is a good opportunity to showcase some weeds that I don't too commonly find in fields, and some of these weeds you would actually consider to be wildflowers. However, they can be weeds in the right situation, so let's take a look and see some of them here. This guy here with these little blue flowers, this is blue burr, sometimes called forget-me-not. Here we have the common Alberta wild rose. Once again, kind of a wildflower, not really a weed. Here we got some false ragweed or giant ragweed, depending on who you talk to. It is a species of ragweed. Shows up once in a while. Here we have a really good sized plant of yarrow. Pretty distinctive white flowers on this guy with these kind of fern-like leaves. These are edible. They actually make decent tea, but they are very, very strongly flavored. This guy with these yellow flowers you'll quite commonly see on lawns and sporting fields and stuff. This is black medic. It can be a pretty bad creeping invasive weed, especially in lawns, but it is part of the legume family. This giant thistle here, this is probably a bull thistle. Don't see these too often. Hmm, maybe this one's the bull thistle. I might be getting those backwards. Here's a good example of a mature yellow salsify or goat's beard. You can see that nice big yellow flower. We've got a couple buds here as well, and you can tell all the time when you break that stem, you can see that distinctive white latex, just like a dandelion in there. Even though it does have grass-like leaves, it is not a grass. Well, it's a pretty nice Friday afternoon out here now. However, we have a pretty strong east wind really starting to pick up. And you can see here behind me, we do have some clouds forming out to the west. So we are actually under a very severe thunderstorm watch at the moment with the possibility of strong winds and hail late this afternoon or evening. So we'll have to see what happens. But uh, for now, that'll be it for this week. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.